That's been the big challenge in the cyber learning debate, I think, is that there's a whole group of people who wants to use the tools to transform what we're already doing in school. So we have cyber learning for STEM education or cyber learning for, for health education. But then there's another group of folks who are looking at cyber learning tools just to see what kind of learning occurs when people engage in, in uh, participatory cultures or they organize around technologies. And those two communities don't really overlap very well. One of them really wants to do what schools do, and the other one wants to see what the tools are capable of. The big contrast, I think, is like imagine a world in which you already knew what students should learn. Then the technologies are just means. And then you want to test the ability of the technologies to deliver those, those ends that you already know. But then imagine another world in which we don't really know what the learning goals are. The, the tools sort of uh, embed practices that go in their own directions. And so there's a whole group of researchers studying that, too, to see like what kinds of learning emerge from using these tools. And the interesting thing about kids is that they're very early adopters, and, but they adopt, they adapt, actually, the tools to what they think is interesting. And so social media sites really took off when high schoolers embraced them, first MySpace and then Facebook, as virtual um, extensions of their ability to interact with their friends. And the s folks in schools have been scrambling ever since to figure out how do we get social in network interaction in our schools. And the transition has not been very hard because we're trying, or it's not been very easy because we're, we're um, trying to export natural practices from their native land into an artificial context. I think one of the problems that curriculum instruction is, go is going to have is there's a very long sort of industrial model for how curriculum gets organized that's over a hundred years old. It's based on standards and it's based on um, a shared model of what's learned. And, and so in schools you have a model for what's learned and then all the kids have to go along with that model. And I think the, the new models that are being developed now are much more production focused where kids integrate what they know into meaningful uh, performances or products and then the technologies organize around those products both in their production but also in their sharing to give kids a real investment in what they're building and, 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 and doing. But the kind of movies or the kinds of machinima or the kinds of production that kids are engaging in does not map very well onto traditional curriculum maps. And so like what happens with chemistry? Well, that's a big problem because kids are engaged in a lot of sophisticated media production practices that don't really involve chemistry. There are different kinds of learning goals. Like a, a huge part of our education process is uh, cultural inheritance. There's a whole bunch of knowledge that we think that educated citizens should have and that our schools are designed very efficiently to transmit that knowledge. I mean, you can't teach algebra much better than it's currently being taught in our schools. And to ask games to do it or other kinds of media to do it, it just, it's the, the new the new methods are just inefficient compared to what we already have. The question, is, or the question for us is that a lot of kids aren't engaged by algebra or chemistry. They're engaged by other stuff. And so we can follow the trail of engagement to figure out what kinds of things interest them. And are there, are there legitimate um, uh, academic pursuits to be sort of discerned in, 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 the, in that form of participation? I think the best... <clears throat> The best model that I can think of now is what's going to happen with high schools in the next 20, 30 years. The community college model, which is an enormous range of electives for <clears throat> all kinds of practices, right, from media production to professional trades to sciences to math to literature, is a huge smorgasbord. It almost like takes the comprehensive high school and explodes it and puts the learner in charge of, con of constructing an educational pathway. I think we're going to see much more of that in our high schools, like less emphasis on core academic curriculum and more emphasis on, well, what, what interests you? It's really hard to discern the, the state of public education because all the press is negative. Like the liberals are on schools because of their failures, the conservatives are on schools because they cost too much, parents are on schools because of taxation and disciplinary issues, students are on schools because they don't want to be there, teachers are overworked, like it's a universally negative message. 
And it, so it's really hard to discern like what's actually going on. What are the day-to-day -day practices that, that give people life, life in schools? And that voice is just not being heard. The voice of teachers who you know, don't, aren't dealing with extraordinary circumstances every day, but are just trying to teach algebra. They're just trying to teach programming. They're trying to teach kids how to read. Those stories are just not being heard in, in the contemporary discourse. And on the one hand, I think all this attention is good because institutions don't grow if you don't point out their critiques. Right? You've got to have a persistent atmosphere of criticism, otherwise it just becomes good enough. And so the fact that, that American pub public education is such a hot-button issue really gives us sort of a public incentive to make change in schools. But I am worried about the baby in the bathwater problem, that the stuff that works in schools just doesn't get reported. And, we're, and so we're in this cycle of constant reform that doesn't really stick to, to what we're already doing. But at a micro level, teachers still make every single decision about which student gets to speak, how the assignments are structured, what kind of feedback they give to their, to their students. I mean, the, the great promise of the whole school reform argument that we're having is that at the micro level, teachers have as much control as they ever had. And they can ask questions in however they see fit to, to interact with, with students. So to me, there's, there's enormous amounts of hope in the very place where, that makes the most difference.